director of forensics and drama and group and turf, and she is our Cheryl Frazier. <laughs> okay, I guess we let's give her a round of applause. But what we decided to do today, um, because you really haven't seen anything, not to say that you're not very much enjoying virtual presentations, but you're a little bit tired of that. And so um, we went to the IHSA this year and um, we came away with second place. And if you know anything about Mrs. Frazier, um, you know that she always places. But when I saw this presentation, I said to her, Mrs. Frazier, everyone in the community that comes has to see this. So I'm gonna ask Mrs. Frazier to come out and introduce uh, the second place, not the first place, the second place winner in group interpretation. And because I've seen it, it's absolutely magnificent. Good evening, Mrs. Frazier. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Well, um, I'd like to say again, welcome to live performances after two years. Although the speech and theater department is not normally featured in the spring concert, we usually uh, in the past have had our own production in the spring. We are pleased to be here tonight to present the IHSA 2022 State Runners Up in Group Interpretation after a two year absence from this activity. As a matter of fact, um, in March of 2020, we were preparing for our season in Group Interpret and Drama. Uh, and I actually happened to be in a play myself uh, downtown and we were gonna have a practice on Pulaski Day as we normally do and so I got to school at eight o'clock ready to have practice and nobody was at school. And I'm like, where are these kids? Where, where, where are the coaches? And I hadn't looked at my text message that said the IHSA had canceled the season. And so I can't tell you how pleased we are to be here in person today. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the cancellation of the 2020 group interpret and drama season. And with the pandemic still raging in 2021, in-person competitions were not possible. So we decided to pivot and we did a virtual contest play instead, which turned out to be a good decision since we received third in the state with our production of the Colored Museum last year. But now back in person, we were ready to tackle group interpretation again. So with a cast of four freshmen, five sophomores and only one senior, none of which had ever heard of Group and Turp, except for the senior, we embarked on a journey to tell one of my favorite stories. But what is GI, Group Interpretation? Group Interpretation is an event in which groups of three or more students interpretively present literature. The purpose of Group Interpretation is to give students experience in the group performance of literature. Group interpretation encourages students to create an ensemble performance which showcases their interpretive skills and group work without the aid of a costume, makeup, set, or props. The choice of a group interpretation to be presented shall be but is not limited to prose, verse drama, speeches, diaries, letters, essays, or compilations and original material. Since the inception of the activity at Southland, we have always focused on telling African American stories. This year was no exception. We decided to revisit the very first story that qualified us for state in this activity, The Bluest Eye by Nobel Prize winning author, Toni Morrison. Morrison's novels explore the African-American experience where characters struggle to find themselves in a society that often fails to see them, to see them as they are in their cultural identity. So now, 
Without further ado, I now present to you the IHSA 2022 State Runners-Up in Group Interpretation, performing The Bluest Eye. Here's the house. It is green and white. It has a red door. It is very pretty. Here's a family. Mother, father, Dick, and Jane live in the green and white house. They are very happy. See Jane, she wants to play. Who will play with Jane? See father, he is big and strong. Father, will you play with Jane? Father is smiling. Smile, father, smile. Play, Jane, play! Quiet as it's kept. There were no marigolds in the fall of 1941. Not even the gardens fronts in the lake showed marigold that year. We thought at the time. It was because Pecola was having her father's baby. A little examination proved to us that our seeds were not the only ones that did not sprout. Nobody did. The seeds shriveled and died. Pecola's baby too. There is really nothing more to say except. Why? But since why is too difficult to handle, one must take refuge in. How? The, the blue sky. sky by Toni Morrison. Pecola came, came to us in autumn. In autumn. School starts and Frida and I get new brown stockings. And Kyle kind of a oil, yuck. And Daddy spends hours cutting and stacking. You need to make sure the wood is stacked perpendicular. Perpin. That's up and down, not sideways. I knew that. I did. What you need to do is make sure the pieces on top slant down so the rain slides off. Not gonna stay warm on damp wood. Daddy goes on. And damp wood makes moldy wood. And on. And moldy wood's not good. Remember, kindling goes in the bucket and on under the shed. And girls, remember, if it's not smaller than your ring finger, it's, it's not, not kindling. kindling. Lord, it's cold. Mama had to stuff rags in the winter to stave off the cold. Saving, Saving off the cold is a family project. project. And I get a cold anyways. What? <laughs> Great Jesus, where's the big sound? I know I don't whip my fingers off to a bone so my children can be laid up in bed sick. Next thing I know, Claudia then passed it to Frida, then we all sick. That's, That's what she always, always does, does in the fall. fall. I get sick and yeah. mama fusses. But it wasn't all bad. In our household, there was love. Love for mama and daddy. Thick and dark as alligator. So when I think of autumn, I think of somebody with hands who do not want me to die. And daddy's strong silhouette looking over us. Quiet and serious and concerned. And Pecola. Pecola, we love. Here's the family. Mother, see mother, mother is very nice. Mother, will you play with Jane? Father, see father, he is big and strong. Father, will you play with Jane? Dick and Jane live with mother and father. They live in the green and white house and they are very happy. Actually, they live in the storefront. And they lived there because they were Pope and black. And peculiar. And they stayed there because they believed they were ugly. Please God. Please make me disappear. Please, 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 God. And peculiar. You already said that. Well, it's true. And Pecola called her mother. Mrs. Breedma. Peculiar. You looked at them and wondered, why are they so ugly? When I had my girl, I remember I said I loved it no matter what it looked like. She was a big old healthy baby. All big brown eyes and hair. A right smart baby she was too. Eyes are soft and wet like a cross between a puppy and a dying man. But I know she was ugly. Hair full of pretty hair, but Lord, she was ugly. Please, God, please make me invisible. Please, please, please. You look closely and cannot find the source. Then you realize it came from conviction. Their conviction. It was as though some mysterious all-knowing master had given each one a cloak of ugliness to wear, and they had accepted it without question. 
The master had said, You are ugly people. It was a truth supported by every billboard, every movie, every glance. Yes, you are right. And they took the ugliness in their hands, threw it as a mantle over them, and went about the world with it. One Saturday morning in October, not much different from any other Saturday morning in October, they began. One by one. To stir out of their dreams into the anonymous misery of their ugly storefront and ugly lives. I need some coal in this house. Oh, woman. I need some coal now. It's cold. You so drunk, you wouldn't feel hellfire. But I'm cold. I got a lot of things to do, but I ain't got to freeze. Leave me alone. Not until you give me some coal. If working like a mule don't give me the right to be warm, what am I doing it for? You so don't bring in nothing. If it was up to you, we all be dead. If you think I'm going to wade out into the cold and get it myself, you better think again. I don't care much how you get it. You going to get your drunk self out of bed and give me some coal or not? Silence. Silence. Charlie. Silence. Silence. Don't try me this morning, man. They all knew that Miss Breedlove could have, would have, and had gotten coal from the shed herself. Or that Sammy up a coal would be directed to get it. But this was a ceremonial dance. All right. All right. But if I sneeze once, just once, God help you. Don't, Mrs. Mrs. Breelove, don't! Sammy, like Pecola, called his mother, Mrs. Breelove. But Mrs. Mrs. Breelove did! By the grace, <gasps> no doubt, of oh God, Mrs. Breelove sneezed! <laughs> just just once. Tell him, Mrs. Breelove, all each other. He fought her way, carried by some man. With feet, the palms of the hands and teeth. teeth. She and Tara fought back in a purely feminine way. With fried pans of poker. And occasionally a flat iron. Mrs. Breelove snatched a brown flat stove lid. Struck him with two blows. Threw a blue over him. And let him lie. Please, please God, please, please make me disappear. disappear. If I squeeze my eyes shut real tight, little parts of my body fade away. First my fingers go away, one by one. Then my arms disappear, all the way to the elbow. My feet now, and the legs all at once. Above my thighs is the hardest part. I have to be real still and pull. And pull, and pull, almost done, almost. But no matter how hard she tried, my eyes, my eyes are always left. As long as she looked the way she did. As long as she was ugly. She would have to stay with these people. She belonged to him. She sat long hours. Looking in the mirror, trying to discover the secret of her ugliness. The, the ugliness that made her ignored and despised. At school, by teachers, and classmates alike. But if my eyes were different, Beautiful. Maybe Charlie would be different. And, and Mrs. Breelove, too. Maybe they say... Why look at pretty Apicola? We mustn't do bad things in front of those pretty eyes. Pretty, pretty eyes, pretty, pretty blue eyes. Big blue pretty eyes. Every night she prayed for blue eyes. Fervently. For a year she had prayed. Although somewhat discouraged, she, she was, was not without hope. To have something as wonderful as that happen would take a, a long, long time. Here's the dog, see the dog, bow wow goes the dog, see the dog run, run dog run. Girl, you heard about the pre-love. Heard they outdoors. I heard that old dog, Charlie Breelove, had gone upside his wife's head and burnt the house down. <laughs> And everybody is outdoors. So anyways, County got them split up in place with family so it all gets sorted out. And Pecola got a place with us. Mama said she gonna be with us till they get reunited with her family. So be nice to her and don't fight. Well, whatever they had to say about it. We have fun. Frida and I focus on stop fighting each other and concentrate on how I think our guests not feel. Outdoors. Would you like some graham crackers? I don't care. I could get you some graham crackers and milk. <gasps> I have a Shirley Temple cup you can use, but you can't tell Mama because we're supposed to bring our snacks inside. I love Shirley Temple. Why? I don't know. She's pretty and talented, and people love her. I don't. Why? 
Did you see her in that movie with Bojangles where she danced? She's so cute! They gaze fondly at the silhouette of Shirley Temple's dimpled face. She's so cute! I hate Shirley Temple, not because she's so cute! But because she danced with Bojangles. He was my friend, my uncle, my daddy. He should have been soft shoeing it and chuckling with me. What made people look at Shirley Temple and say, Aww! But not see me at all. Why was I invisible? It was a lonesome Saturday. The house smelled of mustard greens and mama was fussing. Three quarts! Three quarts of milk? That's what was in the icebox yesterday. Three whole quarts. Now there ain't none, not a drop. I don't mind folks coming in and getting what they want for three quarts of milk. What the devil does anybody need with three quarts of milk? She's, She's talking, talking about Pecola. Why do you drink so much milk, Pecola? I don't know. I do. It's because you like using them Shirley Temple cups, ain't it? Guess so. You think I ought to explain it to your mama? No. I don't know what I'm supposed to be running here. A charity ward, I guess. Time for me to get out of the giving line and get into a getting line. I guess I ain't supposed to have nothing. I'm supposed to end up in the pole house. Folks just spend all their time trying to figure out ways to send me to the pole house. As if I don't have enough trouble trying to feed my own. Now I got something else on in here that's going to drink me right on in there. Well, no, she ain't. We better get for start in about Roosevelt and the CCC camps and all, all them people, people don't care whether we got, got a loaf of bread. I think I'm some kind of Sandy Claus. Well, they can just take their stockings down because it ain't Christmas. Dairy Farm! Mama's fuss and finally slid into silence. Let's do something. What you want to do? I don't know. Want to go look up at Daddy's girly magazines? Rita made an ugly face. You know I don't like looking at them ugly pictures. You like to look at pictures of naked people, Pecola? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-uh. That ain't civilized. Well, we could look at the Bible. That's civilized. Uh, uh clearly this is a bad idea. idea. I know. We could go ask Sophia Church to read our futures. Sophia Church! And Lahu Michael Wickham, also known as Sophia Church, was a reader, advisor, and interpreter of dreams. He talks smart and even has his own business card. If you aren't happy, Discourage or distress, I can help you. Does bad luck seem to follow you? Mm. How's the one you love changed? Yeah. I can help you. Questions of truth, honesty, faith, or deceit, I will reveal the truth. Okay. okay. Only person we knew what the business card was the insurance man. I will tell you who your enemies or friends are. And if the one you love is false. Uh-uh. Sides, look at me. I don't need old soap to tell me I ain't gonna have a boyfriend one day. Fine. I didn't want to go to Sophia's house anyway. It, it was, was at this moment that Pecola's world changed forever. Oh my. Suddenly, Pecola stood straight up. Her eyes wide with terror. What's the matter with you? Hey, look, you cut yourself. It's all over your dress. A brownish red stain discolored the back of her dress. Ugh. Oh, Lordy, I know. I know what that is. I think I'm going to die. Will I die? No, you won't die. It just means you can have a baby. Wow, a baby. That night in bed, the three of them lay still. We were full of respect and awe for Pecola. She, she was, was different, different from us now. Grown, grown up like. She probably felt it too, but did not lord it over us. It's true that I can have a baby now? Sure you can. But how? Somebody has to love you. Oh. Then Pecola asked a question. That had never entered my mind. How do you do that? I mean, how do you get somebody to love you? But, but Frida was asleep. <sighs> and I didn't know. Winter to tighten our heads with a band of cold and melted eyes. And in winter, we put pepper in the feet of our stockings. Vaseline on our faces and force ourselves to swallow breakfast of slippery lumps of cold oatmeal. But mostly, we, we wait, wait for spring when there will be gardens. But then, somewhere in the middle of winter gloom, a distraction. Maureen Peel. She's beautiful. She isn't all that. Is too. Fine. Okay. 
rain was beautiful. A high yellow dream child with long hair braided in two ropes that hung down her back. I think she's rich. Rich, at least to our standards. She was as rich as the rich as a white girl. The quality of her clothes. Threatened to derange us. There was a hint of spring in her slow green eyes. Her skin, bright and yellow and smooth and soft. Like churn butter. She enchanted the entire school. When teachers called on her, they smiled encouragingly. Black boys in trip on the halls. She, she always has lunch money and never eats alone. She even likes white milk. Frida and I were both fascinated and irritated by her. We looked hard for flaws, but the most we could do was ugly up our name. Marine Peel. Marine Pie. Uh-uh, she nothing but a big fat piece of nasty meringue pie. We were overjoyed when we discovered that she had been born with six fingers on each hand. And there was a bump where each one had been removed. And she had a dog tooth. A cute little thing. But a dog tooth nevertheless. Six fingers dog to meringue pie. We stick it and call her names behind the backs of her faithful and adoring cover. Dog tooth. Then to my horror, she was assigned the locker next to mine. Hi. Hi. Waiting for your sister? Mm hmm Which way do you go home? Down 21st Street, the Broadway. Why don't you go down 22nd Street? Because I live on 21st Street. Oh, I guess I could walk part of the way that way. Free country. Frida, Frida and Claudia exchange, exchange glances. glances. She stay at your house. Her mama fixing up their place. Suddenly animated, Maureen put her arm through Bacola's and began to be And so they were the closest of friends. I just moved here. My name is Maureen Hill. Of course we knew her name. Everybody knew her name. What's yours? Pacola. Pacola. Wasn't that the name of the girl from Imitation of Life? I don't know. What's that? A picture show. You know where this mulatto girl hates her mother because she's black and ugly, but then cries at the funeral. It was so sad. Everybody cries in it. Oh. Anyway, her name was Pacola, too. She was so pretty. When it comes back, I'm going to go see it again. My mother has seen it four times. Mrs. Bree, my mama say she used to go to the show before I was born. My mother says that a girl where we used to live went to a beauty parlor and asked Lady to fix her hair like Hedy Lamar's. And the lady said, yeah, when you grow some hair like Hedy Lamar's. <laughs> Sounds crazy. She was. That girl was 16 and can't even have a baby yet. Can y'all? I started two months ago. My girlfriend in Toledo started before me, and she thought she was dying. You know what it's for? For babies. Babies need blood from inside of you. But how do the babies get the blood? Everybody knows that. Then how? <laughs> Tell them, Maureen. Babies get blood through the left leg. That's where your belly button is. Then how come boys have belly buttons? They don't have babies. I don't know. Boys have all sorts of things they don't need. Have you ever seen a naked man? No. Where would I see a naked man? That would be uncivilized. I don't know. I just asked the question. I wouldn't even look at a naked man if he stood in front of me. That would be nasty. Who wants to see a naked man? Pacola was getting agitated. Nobody's father would be naked in front of his own daughter. Not unless he was dirty, too. I didn't say anything about father. I just said a naked man. Well, I thought, how come you said father? Maureen wanted, wanted to know. Who else would she see? Dog too. <gasps> I was glad for a real reason to be mad. Not only was I a little jealous that Maureen turned her sunshine attention on Pacola, like they were best friends or something, but because we had seen our own father naked <gasps> and didn't care to be reminded of it. I wasn't talking to you anyway. I don't care if you see a father naked all day and all night. Who cares? You do. That's all you talk about. It is not. It is two boys, babies, and somebody naked daddy. You, you must be born crazy. crazy. You better be quiet. Who gonna make me? Frida put, put a hand on her hip and turned her face on Maureen. You already made Nanny May. You stop talking about my mama. You stop talking about my daddy. Who said anything about your daddy? You did. Well, you started it. I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to Pacola. Yeah, about seeing her naked daddy. So what if she did see him? I never saw my daddy naked, never. You did too? All the kids say so. Pacola saw her daddy. You stop talking about her daddy. What do I care about her old black daddy? Black? Black? Who you calling black? You. <laughs> you think you so cute. 
Junk heap. The, the pieces, pieces of Charlie's life could only make sense in the head of a musician. Only a musician could give true form to Charlie's painful and confused life. Only a musician would know without even knowing that Charlie knew that he was free. Not, Not a good kind of freedom, but a perverted freedom. Free to be tender or violent. Free to take a woman's insults. For his body had already conquered hers. Free even to knock on the head. For in his disturbed mind, that right was his. Free, free to, to live his, his own fantasies. fantasies. And so, it was on a Saturday afternoon, in, in the, the thin light of spring, spring that, that Charlie, Charlie staggered home really drunk and saw his daughter in the kitchen. She was washing dishes. Her small back hunched over the sink. Charlie, Charlie saw, saw her, her dimly and could not tell what he saw or what he felt. felt. He became aware that he was uncomfortable, but then... And like so many times before, his discomfort started to feel like pleasure, then, then revulsion, then guilt, then, then pity, then love. A violent, painful, lonely love. He wanted to break her neck! But tenderly... Why'd she have to look so wet? What, what could he do for her? What could he give to her? What could he say to her? What could a burned out black man say to the hunchback of his 11 year old daughter? His hatred for her slimed in his stomach just as she shifted her weight and stood on one foot. Scratching the back of her leg with her toe. It was a quiet and pitiful gesture. It was what Pauline was doing the first time he saw her in Kentucky. Leaning on a fence, the creamy toe of her bare foot. Scratches a velvet leg. It was such a simple gesture. And once again, the desperate aching freedom to claim manhood through the most unspeakable. Unthinkable. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. <gasps> that the story was about Pecola. So hush, little baby, don't you cry. <laughs> Did you hear about that girl pregnant? They say it's Charlie. Mm -hmm. Remember that time he tried to burn them up? I knew he was crazy then. Well, they ought to take her out of school. Ought to? She carries some of the blame. How come she didn't fight him? Well, they probably won't live. They say the way her mama beat her, she lucky to be alive herself. She be lucky if you don't live. Mm -hmm. I thought about the baby that everybody wanted dead, and I listened for the one who would say, Poor little girl. Or, 
Oh, baby. But it was only head wagging where those words should have been. Bound to be the ugliest thing walking! <laughs> The purpose of this letter is to familiarize you with the facts, which I, the happy, have escaped your notice, or which you have chosen to ignore. A little black girl came to me. What can I do for you, my child? It sure you help people get their wishes, Mr. Church. Call me so bad, Church. Everybody else does. So, you can help me, mister? You can help me? Sell so right here? Satisfaction guaranteed. Maybe. Maybe you could do it for me. What do you need me to do? I can't go to school no more. And I thought maybe you could help. Help you have? Tell me. Don't be frightened. M my eyes. What about your eyes? I want them blue. I want them blue so people won't turn away from me when I walk down the street. So I can go to school. So my stomach stop growing and my baby be strong. I want them blue so my mom love me and I have friends and they think I'm pretty. I want them blue so people won't do ugly things in front of me no more and I stop being invisible. With a trembling hand, he made the sign of the cross over her. Kneel, my child. I can do nothing for you. I'm not a magician. I work only through the Lord. He sometimes uses me to help people. All I can do is offer myself to him as the instrument through which he works. If he wants your wish granted, he will do it. I like a pair of new blue eyes. She came for blue eyes. New blue eyes, she said. Like she was buying shoes or something. She must have asked you for them for a very long time, and you haven't replied. She came to me. Did you forget about her? Did you? Yes. You forgot? That's why I changed the little black girl's eyes for her. And I didn't touch her. Not a finger did I lay on her. But I gave her those blue eyes. I did what you did not, not could not, not, would not do. I, I have caused a miracle. I gave her the eyes. Cobalt blue. A streak of it, right out of your own blue heaven. <laughs> no, no one else to see her blue eyes, but she will. She will. She will. I don't know why you have to look at them every minute. They are going anywhere. I know it. I just like to look. See how pretty they are. Prettier than the sky. Oh yes, and bluer too. But. Suppose they aren't blue enough. Blue enough for what? I'm leaving. Why? Are you mad at me? Yes. Because my eyes aren't blue enough? Because I don't have the bluest eyes? Will you come back if I get them? Get what? The bluest eyes. Will you come back then? Of course I will. I'm just going away for a little while. You promise? Sure. I'll be back right before your very <laughs> eyes. 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 So it was. A little black girl yearns for the blue eyes of a little white girl. And the horror of the heart of her yearning is succeeded only by the evil of fulfillment. The damage done was total. There were no marigolds in the fall of 1941. Not even the gardens crossing the lake showed marigolds that year. We thought at the time. It was because Wakola was having her father's baby. What is clear now is that all of that hope, fear, lust, love, and grief, nothing remains but Pecola and the unyielding earth. Pretty eyes, pretty blue eyes, big blue. Pretty eyes.
Mama Nikir Ensemble. Christian Boyle, Daddy Nikir Ensemble. Anthony House Jr., Charlie Greenlove Ensemble. Hayden Wright, Doreen Keels Ensemble. Asaya Lee, Sophia Church Ensemble. Jazzea Alpha, Colleen Greenlove Ensemble. Michael Moore, Rita McKee. Jay Shaddy, Claudia. Makira Stuckey, Pacola Greenlove. The 2022 IHSA State Runners Up. <laughs> Very proud of this uh, cast because it's a young cast. All underclassmen, except for our one senior, who is now not only, uh, she is our state champion as a freshman, uh, she was on the state championship uh, cast of our performance in the round, Serafina, and it's so appropriate that she ends her career in speech and drama still as a state finalist. So with that being said, we'd like to honor our, our one senior who has been with us for four years, Deja Madison, who followed in the footsteps of her older brother, Don Yang. Uh, but Deja has just been a tremendous young woman and definitely led this team, this young team. Thank you, dear, and I love you. Thank you. visited colleges, and Deja, you look up one day, and you'll see Mrs. Frazier or one of them just coming to have dinner with you to say, we missed you, and we want to know how you're doing. So one of the things that we have the pleasure of doing is going out and, and following uh, our young people and across their journey. And we do believe this year uh, that it's possible for us to do that safely. But Mrs. Frazier, I don't think you ever had any doubts. You know, she's the winningest coach in the state of Illinois, and she knows that, but we thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you from all the little ones. And you know what, Mr. Nelson, sir? I'm gonna make a change. Um, every year, um, our students choose what theme they want to portray uh, the um, Spring Festival. And you know what they chose this year? Um, but you know, I'm thinking that as we go from Tony Morrison, and as we go from thinking about appearances, because you know what parents, what we, we believe is the color of our skin should make no difference. What should make a difference is what's in our hearts. What should make a difference is what's in our minds. And we're extremely hopeful that as all of our young people go out into the world, that the world will change and um, that will be a fact. And so let's have a little bit of precious Lourdes as we go on. And then we're going to go into an entirely different mode. Now, you really don't expect me to sing, so I can't do that, but that's okay.
parents, family, and friends to the Spring Festival of Performing Arts. Uh, but before this, this Disney broke that contract. Instead of suing him, he said he'd never be in another Disney movie. They tried to appease him, and they gave him a $1 million Picasso painting, but it didn't go with his decor. So eventually, when the new president came in, uh, Robin Williams did do another cartoon animation with Disney. Turning to the band, concert band, a couple of selections, a couple of things about what they're doing from the Mandalorian series. Like that? Two people like it good? <laughs> gotta have it. Of course, you can tell us it's the American Space Western TV series created by John Farrow. It's about events that happened five years after the return of the Jedi, the Star Wars thing. Uh, just briefly, if you don't watch it, it follows a bounty hunter in a galaxy far away hired by evil forces to retrieve a child called Grogu. Probably, Probably yeah. sounds, sounds like an like episode of the Kardashians a few years ago. <laughs> the third <laughs> season, by the way, will be happening is coming out this summer. summer. The, the other selection, selection that the concert band is doing is from the Black, Black Panther. Panther. That grossed $1.3 billion, billion, the highest grossing film, film by a black, black filmmaker to this day. <laughs> The composer of the music you're going to hear tonight was uh, a man called Gurnson. He actually went to Africa for months to research local musicians in Senegal, so his music would be authentic. Under the direction of Mr. Ronald Harrigan, here's the Southland Concert Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, we want to take a brief moment to honor the seniors who've been a part of this program for four years, ensuring its growth and its continued strive towards excellence. Even much so that recently in the state band competition, they were named the best band of that day's competition. So, uh, if the following seniors can quickly join me uh, on the stage to be recognized for your commitment to this band program, beginning with Jalan Emmanuel. Sakai Green. Fata Joe. Joe. Robert Brown. Quabina <laughs> Robinson. Alexander Sanchez. Mackenzie Salvo. Jalen Stingley. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 senior class.
think that next group is most of them.
little by a little trivia about Black Panther. Did you know in 1992 who was trying to make or was going to try to make Black Black Panther? It, it was made in. What did you say? You're right. Wesley Snipes. It just didn't get made. Interesting. The two of us. The jazz band is next. And I just want to briefly talk about a couple of selections they're playing. The, the thing, the Disney. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that. The D. Uh, cartoon that it's from. The Incredibles is one of them. Uh, 2004 first computer animated uh, uh, film by Pixar, which makes my daughter happy, who's in animation school. I hope there's a lot of animator jobs out there. It won two Academy Awards. The director, Brad Bird, pitched the idea to Pixar after he made a picture that bombed. Iron Giant. Anybody see it? Oh, okay. They, they took the pitch anyway. Holly Hunter played Elastic Girl in her first ever voice cartoon. And new technology had to be created to make the human anatomy, hair, and face look realistic. In the other selection, I have somewhat of a tie to this, by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Released in 1976, it was number one in the Billboard Soul Songs and number 12 on the Hot 100 chart. Uh, Getaway was produced by Maurice White and a father of a student I taught, I can't believe it, Charles Stepney. The name ring a bell? Shante Stepney, a student of mine about 20 years ago. Okay, directed by Ronald Harrigan, here is the Southland Jazz Band.
it big and strong. Burn the fence out of the sun. Yeah, found my work had just begun. Found I had to stand alone. Yeah, blessing now I got my own. So if you find yourself in need, why don't you listen to these words of heed? Be a giant grain of sand. Words of wisdom, yes I can. Imagine this uh, pitch about a new cartoon. Uh, this little cute lion cub uh, gets framed for murder uh, by his uncle uh, while then dancing to Elton John music. Well, that's exactly the pitch, and Disney bought it, hello, and it did well. The 32nd Disney animated, released in 1994, featured songs, of course, by Elton John and lyricist Tim Rice, who first uh, did the lyrics for Jesus Christ Superstar, right? It was the first Disney animated feature to be an original story based on the Bible, uh, Joseph and Moses, and also by Shakespeare's Hamlet. More than 600 artists, animators, and technicians contributed to Lion King. A 1994 earthquake meant that the artists have to finish the work remotely. When it was released, there were 28 versions in many languages, including a Zulu version in South Africa with Zulu actors. Now, welcome the Southland Chorus, directed by Miss Sojournal Norman, and dancers led by Miss Gloria Chapman. Look, Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow! A king's time is ruler, rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. And this will be all mine? Everything. Everything the light touches? What about the shadowy place way out there? That's beyond our borders. You must never go there, Simba. But I thought a king could do whatever he wants. Well, there's a lot more to being king than getting your way all the time. Dad, what are those birds over there? They are buzzards. They're scary. Why don't we chase them away? I don't have to. They are doing what they're supposed to do. You see, Simba, everything exists in a delicate balance, and you must understand that you need to respect and balance all creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. But Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Thank you. 
That's lively. The sooner we get to the Watson Ho, the sooner we can leave. So where are we really going? The elephant graveyard. Wow. Shh. Sausage. Right. So how do we get rid of the dodo? I have a plan. Just look at you two little seeds of romance blossoming in the Sahara. Your parents would be thrilled with your being betrothed. But what? Betrothed. Intended. A fiance. Ew. I can't marry her. She's my friend. Yeah, it'll be so weird. Sorry to burst your bubble, but you two li turtle doves have no choice. This is a tradition going back generations. Well, when I'm king, that'll be the first thing to go. Not as long as I'm around. Well, then you're fired. Nice try, but only a king can do that. Well, he's the future king. Look at me, you may think you see who I really am, but you'll never know me. Every day, it's as if I play a part. Now I see, if I wear a mask, I can fool the world, but I cannot fool my. Staring straight back at me When will 
what I believe in But somehow I can show the world What's inside my heart And be loved for who I am Oh, oh, oh Here's the girl I see Staring straight back at me Reflections of their mothers.
States. No more guitar, uh, guitar solos? Is that it for the night? One? Uh, as you notice, the dancers are dancing not from a Lion King thing, but from a Mulan Reflections. Uh, Mulan is credit credited with uh, starting whose career? Whose singing career? Christine Aguilera's singing career. Now we're going to take a couple things from uh, some of my favorites, The Beauty and the Beast and Pocahontas. The 1991 Disney version uh, of Be Beauty and the Beast was followed by the 2017 live action version with music starring Emma Watson. She was paid $3 million, Dr. Davis kind of money, and <laughs> guaranteed, no, this is Dr. Davis money, and guaranteed $15 million more if the movie did well. Beauty and the Beast, I think it did well. In 1991, the duet singing the song was Celine Dion and Peebo Bryce, and in, in 2017, Ariana Grande and John Legend. Uh, by the way, Celine Dion, whose husband and manager both died, unfortunately, before the new movie was made. Uh, even though she was uh, heart-stricken, she agreed to sing over the credits for the 1991 version. Pocahontas, quickly, based on the life of the Powhatan woman, romanticizing her life with John Smith. Actually, it had to be cleaned up. She, as you know, Pocahontas was 12 years old in reality, and John Smith was a smelly, not nice man. He received two Academy Awards and the best musical score and best song. All right, let me get to it. Please welcome the Southland String Ensemble under the direction of Eric Gratz.
myself and my family. Uh, as you may or may not know, I am Dr. Koga, Director of Fine Arts, and it is a delight to see our stream program moving forward. I am not going to give up the fight of having a full performing arts program for our community, which includes strings. So if you can see it with me, I see 100 pieces any day now. At this moment, I want to take the opportunity to recognize our seniors who've been in this program for the last four years, helping us to build and continue it and move it forward. Our graduating seniors, class of 2022. First up is uh, Emily Garcia. Next, not only is he a string player, but he also plays saxophone in the band, and he's the second drum major, Christian Haynes. <laughs> Last, but surely not least, Hello, extraordinary young lady is will be making Southland and our community proud at the University of Chicago. Leela Ellis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our graduating seniors from the stream program. Thank you. to tell her 
about how to make her feel. to tell her about how to make her feel the truth about my past impossible she turned away from me he's holding back he's hiding but what i can't decide why won't he be the king i know he is the king i see We had another point. I, I was, I don't know where I was, but we got more seniors to recognize. Okay, so now I need you to do me a favor. You're going to have to bear with me because this choir is the largest senior class that we have this year. And man, I think it's maybe the last, largest senior class that graduated from the choir this, this group before. So these, and these kids have been together four years. And mind you, they also did well at uh, state competition, earning Division One superiors in every competition they participated in. Give us a second. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sorry, I can't see with them, but I can't read without. Or I can't read without it, so oh, whatever. All right, so uh, hmm, she was one of my first, what, fourth graders or third graders when I got to Illinois? Oh, man. Tolufe Agunle. Kevin Henderson. Michael Blatz. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin. Kendall Clayton. <laughs> Jariah Davis. Jasmine Dotson. Deontay Farrell. Phelan Feaster. Jeffrey Garner. Morgan Hankins. Oh. 
Ryan Hudson. Sophia Hunt. Jordan Hurt. Basketball star. Divine OJ Odibo. Speaks three different languages. Favor, OJ Odibo. Gabrielle Oliver. Mikhail Long. Nevaeh Smithhouse. <laughs> Dwight Taylor. <laughs> Kalia Terrell. Now, a couple of the seniors that we named were not in this performance ensemble, so they probably forgot to come out here. Like, they had to go find these two. So we'll make sure we recognize all of the seniors. Congratulations, class of 2022. All right, here we go. Here's Kevin and Mike. Come on up here, Mike. Here's Kevin and Mike. Let's go down, guys. Yeah. Here's Michael Blacks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You can breathe in the music this city makes. Moved by the rhythm the gypsies play. Deep inside, it comes alive. There is a whisper that feeds your soul. Words so beautiful. 
beautiful like a Spanish rose. Till you're hypnotized, that's when you This is the last time you're going to see me today. And this is easy because all of them are the seniors. Wow, Kendall. You feel old. All right. First graduating senior, Kendall Marksdale. <laughs> Elena Perkins. <laughs> Tamara Costello. Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> Jariah Davis, George Davis. Mr. Donovan Magnus. Anissa Parker. Anissa. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Raven Gerald. <laughs> La 
Dasani, lock it. Lock it. Lock it. I'm sorry. I still be, I still prefer saying Lashane. Lashane. Mariana Mickey. Mari. Last but surely not least, Shania Tate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the advanced troop of Southlands class of 2022. I'm just now realizing how important it is to be grateful for each moment. Although, I am aware that we are the students of today and the leaders of tomorrow. But before tomorrow comes, let me share this with you. Time, represented through change, time which is closely connected to the concept of space. Time is a flowing river. Happy are those who allow themselves to be carried, unresisting with the current. And time, something we tend to try to fast forward and move along, never stopping to take a second, a second to live, <laughs> laugh, learn, and love. I remember my first day at Southland. I walked in and was surrounded by students standing in uniforms. No one knew me, and I was a stranger to them. Freshman year, you taught me perseverance, to keep on pushing no matter what. That if a task is too hard, to never throw in the towel. Sophomore year, I knew what it was like to be insecure. How hard it was to love myself and to find the wholeness in myself until I learned that I am beautiful just the way I am. Junior year, you taught me a family. It's like a circle and the connection never ends. And that if times it breaks and time, it will always Mend. Senior year taught me throughout the pandemic that time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice, but for those who love, time is. Family, friends, laughters, and tears. The greatest lessons that I learned were not always taught in the classroom, but from the actions and encouragement of my peers. I've learned to blaze a trail for history to see. Southland has taught me this important truth, that we all have a purpose in life that begins in our youth. Although I am sad to be moving on, I am grateful for the lessons learned and the memories shared. Southland has equipped me with the tools to go into the real world, communication, the beauty and learning and family, that I'm not too young to solve the world's biggest problems 
and that my voice can be heard, that I possess the ability to impact the community around me, that I'm not at all too young to solve the world's biggest problems. Being here at Southland has taught me to live in the moment and to never pass up an opportunity to dream. Alibaba had them 40 feet, shares and had a thousand tails. But master, you're in luck, cause up your sleeves, you got a brand of magic, never fails. You got some power in your corner now, so clear the ammunition in your camp. You got some punch, pizzazz, yahoo and how, all you gotta do is rub that lamp. And I say, Mr. Aladdin, sir, what will your pleasure be? Let me take your
Michelle, I often tell you this, but I, I, I don't think that you uh, know that I sincerely mean it. Um, every moment of every day, I'm surrounded with young people. And when you think of, about that, um, what else is there to ask for? And so um, when we define the Southland, I, I think about that all the time. And sometimes I think about the dream and uh, sometimes I think about uh, their future. But primarily what I think about is their potential because every day something happens that shows me just who they are. Uh, you know we have this lottery and you know the machine and some of you were lucky in the lottery and, and some of you had to wait two or three months before you, you came in. But imagine getting that kind of talent and it's not selective, it's just the luck of a, a ball. And, and so I, I think about that all the time and um, how very fortunate we are. But I'm also fortunate to have you. Uh, this hasn't been an easy two years for you, as it hasn't been easy two years for us. But rather than complaining about the mask or saying, why are we doing this, I really felt your support. Because you know, it's very easy uh, to uh, support anything, uh, a school district or whatever, when everything is going your way. But COVID turned us upside down. But tonight, don't you feel that we're going back in the, a very, very positive direction? Can, let's give our students another round of applause. But you know, nothing happens without instruction. It, it really doesn't. Nothing happens without that, that magic. And I do call it magic. You know, teaching is not only a science, it's an art. But I sometimes think it's a little bit of magic also that uh, is sprinkled on, on, on students and teachers. And even when they think they can't, if they have a good teacher, then it's always possible. So I want to bring some, some teacher people out and um, so that we can show our appreciation. Do you know that um, <laughs> Mrs. Chapman uh, is actually a certified art teacher and that is her training. And I did not know until I knew her for a long, that her dream really was to do what she's doing now. And I know Mrs. Chapman must be in the back somewhere Please. But <laughs> now you might be thinking, who taught them how to tap like that? Then you're looking at the person, uh, Mrs. Chapman. That's who taught them. How to tap like that, so. And you might be thinking, what about modern dance? Gloria Chapman. But I also want, and I very seldom say anything about that, Mrs. Chapman, but I appreciate the fact that you're a role model for our young girls and um, a mother figure and you understand them and you listen to their problems, but you also insist on excellence. And so we have some flowers for you. Um, she more than deserves them. A round of applause for Mrs. Chapman, please, please, please. please. Absolutely beautiful. And if you saw the girls, um, I was sitting with one of our board members, uh, Jeffrey Johnson, and uh, I told him, I said, I just can't wait until the next performance. But then came Haley Ivy, who was one of your seniors last year, and that beautiful performance. And you know, she wrote that poem as she talked about her, her evolution from a freshman uh, to a senior. And I know what the inspiration for that poem was. It was you, Mrs. Chapman, because you shared it with me. So, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you do. But you know, every program has to grow, and uh, there's someone that's relatively new uh, to us, well, um, uh, through, through, through COVID, and um, he is actually a professional dancer in his own right. Uh, I think he's kind of given that up. I think he's fallen in love with us uh, because he's there every day. In the beginning, he said, you know, I'll be in Atlanta, I'll be here, there, the other. 
but there's something about our students that if you come too close to us, Fred Nelson, you end up stuck, and then you're, you're, you're there. And so, where's our Mr. Davis, please? Now, he's not shy, so he'll eventually be out. I don't know where he is, but okay, we'll come back to him. Um, a special thank you to him. But, you know, um, many of you are with you in with 162, and how many of you uh, sat with me while we listened to the baby bands? Raise your hand. The baby bands. Okay, all right. Give the baby bands a round of applause. But you probably know that uh, Ron Harrigan's dream was to be the leader of a high school band. I, I did not know that until uh, recently uh, when our own Mr. Lawrence retired. And he said, Dr. Davis, I can do it. Dr. Davis, I can build the band. And when you saw the majesty of 122 students, uh, but you also saw that synergism and and that feeling that he generates among them, then you know who Ron Harrigan is. So if you're back there, Mr. Harrigan, I don't know. Now what I'd like to do, because we actually know his wife uh, and we love her, and she was the uh, director of the soft dance troupe and singers, and, and she's just a magnificent person. She's now at Bloom Township. So I'm gonna give you these flowers, but really I want you to take them home and give them to your wife. <laughs> so we <laughs> thank you. And Mr. Harrigan is a father, so you actually get popcorn. It's not really for you, it's for your own children, because we're thinking about them. So take them home, we're, we're popcorn out, you know, today, uh, we had, every, what did we have, pizza, we had uh, Little John, what, what is Jimmy John's and whatever, so uh, we're fit. So take that home. <laughs> so, but Mr. Harrigan, thank you for everything uh, that you do. And I feel your energy with the band. I, I feel the development of the band. And just thank you uh, for uh, just being you. But you know what? I have a dream, and I'll just say this. One of these days, um, Mr. Harrigan is going to come out and he uh, is going to lead the band, band because uh, he is a magnificent mu uh, musician in his own right. He just won't do it. So anyway, uh, he's not shy. He just won't. But sincerely, Mr. Harrigan, I, I recognize the change. I recognize the evolution. Thank you for everything you do. And our best to your wife and uh, your children. Thank you. Now, I'm not a drumline person, I have to tell you that. I'm really not a drumline person. However, uh, we met a man, his name is Watson, and in order to build a band, you do have to have a uh, gentleman. Oh, yeah, we have one sitting right there, he's quiet. Here, here just give me a little beat, beat something. All right, well, I guess we weren't doing that exactly right. So. Uh, we hired a man from the HBCUs, and he's here. Um, and so, Mr. Watson, I don't know if you're back there, but if you are, please come out, because we thank you for the beat. And I guess the band has to have a beat, but. Okay. I actually could do that. I actually could do that. But he'll be out at some point. But you know, um, our Dr. Culp, He's coming. We want to thank you, Mr. Watson. We know uh, that you're new to us, but you're certainly not new to music. And so uh, we're giving you um, some popcorn, and we hope that you're going to enjoy it. But sincerely, um, we see the difference in the students. And I do know the percussion, uh, you feel that it leads the band. Other people feel uh, that it doesn't. Uh, there's our own Monty down there on the keyboards and so I, I know, I know, I know. But uh, a band is made up of many different instruments. And even though the drum line is wonderful, uh, we thank you for everything else that you do also. So thank you, sir. Thank you.
that's all right. Now, this is what Mr. Davis looks like. And as I told you, uh, he is a professional dancer. He still is. <laughs> but he agreed to come to us uh, for just a limited period of time. And here we are two and a half years later, and he's now full time with us. So, uh, but his forte, even though modern dance is certainly doable, he loves the ballet. And so for Christmas, it was the Nutcracker. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Davis. We are so appreciative. And I think there's, um, I think the men seem to be getting popcorn, so I hope there's one left for me before we leave. But um, Dr. Culp, anybody remember Sterling Culp? Let's give him a round of applause. You know, um, Sometimes you get to a point where um, you need to do something else. And we didn't realize, I did not realize, that our own Sterling Culp uh, was in his 80s. I really did not realize that until he showed me his driver's license and said, Dr. Davis, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. But he did such a wonderful job of training Mrs. Elizabeth uh, Sojourner uh, Norman that um, we didn't miss a beat. So Mrs. Norman, I know that you're back there because you just finished. So thank you for everything that you do. And we absolutely have to give Mrs. Norman some flowers now. Okay, all right. And Mrs. Norman is kind enough to not only do what she does with her children, but every once in a while she brings her husband. So we're sending your husband uh, home some popcorn so that he will have that also. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm not sure if he's back there, but, um, and you haven't been in the building in forever, but you know what? It's coming. You're going to have to come back. It's coming. It's coming. But we hired uh, a professional musician uh, who's there every day helping our chorus. And thank you, Fred Nelson, for the idea and for the person. So if Mr. Bell is back there, could you come out? Well, that's good. People know who he is. <laughs> and thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> Thank you. Although I will say this, um, when you're looking at Fred Nelson, you're looking at someone that's uh, been playing the piano and the organ, correct me, since he was three years old. So you know what? Uh, before I go on, just give us a little bit of that magistry. On, we may give you a can of popcorn if you do that. So let me hear just a little bit. Well, anyway, okay. <laughs> now, I came from, and I, we have the same mentor, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman uh, from Christ Universal Temple. And uh, Fred is, does not like to play the organ. But when Reverend Coleman said, you know, Fred, and she would lean on the podium, you know that, that look that she had. And she said, I'm going to lean here until you give me some gospel music on the organ. So he's not gonna do that tonight, but he knows that um, you're just absolutely magnificent. So thank you for everything you do. And we do have popcorn for you. But we do have two board members here tonight. And so uh, the president of the 162 board is here, Kevin Murphy, and uh, member Jeffrey Johnson also. But back there in that area, and they're actually sitting next to each other, um, our own state rep, and I don't know if you've missed a performance, but thank you, Debbie Myers Martin. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But from Rich Richton Park, trustee Cynthia Butler, and <laughs> she's just a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful person. Mr. Alexander, uh, also a trustee from Richton Park, where are you? He was here, but honestly, he actually was here. Maybe he had to step out. Um, our Mr. Satchel, let me tell you something about Madison. Um, there you are, but I'm still gonna tell them your story. 
you know, you can come and volunteer for, for us, for, with us. And uh, Mr. Satchel uh, said he wanted to volunteer at the Arcadia. And so six or seven months later, I said, you know what, you've been there every day, all day, and he's been soaking his feet because you know when you have over 500 children uh, that are under the age of seven, you're worn out. And I said, it would be a nice thing if you just came and worked for us because we're never gonna let you go anyway. So I do want to thank you, honestly, uh, Mr. Satchel, for everything uh, that you do. Uh, you take such good care of those children, and I realize that you're a trustee, but to them, you're just there, Mr. Satchel. So thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. But from uh, Park Forest, Trustee uh, Maya Hardy, where, uh, there she is, okay. And she comes out frequently, so we appreciate that. But from Olympia Fields, and um, Olympia Fields is actually the home, uh, Mr. Oliver, of uh, the Arcadia. And so uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Kevin um, Oliver are here, and I really thank them. They do everything possible to keep the, the kids safe. And so let's give them a round of applause. And we do have with us uh, the president of the Democratic Women of Southland, Vivian Covington. How are you? I see you back there. I can tell people now with the mask on, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. But we're gonna start our finale. And so I'm gonna pick on two people out there that are friends. So I do see uh, Sandra Thomas, and I know that you love a good finale, that you have energy. So come on down the stage. We've got something for everybody. And so but she happens to be superintendent of ECHO. She's probably looking around for something. No, you look beautiful. So just decide that you're gonna come down. So that's a good thing. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. But a special friend, um, I have the superintendent of uh, 159, um, Mabel Alford, and let's give her a round of applause. And I hope she's coming my way. I don't know what happened to her. Well, that's nervy. She probably thought, I was, well, I'm just gonna say this publicly. I think, I heard a rumor that she was thinking about retiring. Now, you know we don't have that, Dr. Thomas. With all that talent and all that expertise, so we're gonna have to do something about that. However, all right, um, are we ready? And yes, 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 yes. Ever seen anything like this and you haven't ever felt Dr. Thomas come down here you're not afraid of children okay but you probably haven't ever felt anything like this and when I first um, had the experience um, I'm just not going to tell you I'll let you feel it and then you can decide but this young man I'd never heard him sing before today Na si benya gabaiti baba si tau benya ma benya ma na si benya gabaiti baba si tau benya ma benya ma benya ma. to see that can never be seen 
more to do than can ever be done. But when the sun rolling high through the sapphire sky keeps great and small on the endless round, it's the circle of support and all that we can do um, is what uh, you saw them do and that is every day give our best and so that is our commitment to you uh, that's who we are um, we take great joy in it so please 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 um, enjoy the holiday we'll be coming back and as we look at May we have so many things to share uh, with you. I can't tell you uh, the numbers of colleges that are coming to us saying that they just want them. They just want them. And so. But thank you, thank you so much. 
Fred, I don't know if we're going to go out with Disney or what we're going to go out with, but all right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank night. you. I love you.